Now when I look at these cyclone filters, they all recommend uh, going to a big cartridge element rather than the bag for the fine dust. And I was looking at working with this. And this is the air filter out of, uh, oh shoot, 2004 Peterbilt. Uh, they have a pair of them on either side. And, but I only had the one. I went into Watkin Shepherd, which is a trucking company, and the very, very nice people there went ahead and let me dig in their dumpster for filters that they've replaced. Now their trucks filter on the outside, so I've blown them out. They have a large filter media area in the inside with a ceiling ring, and I don't think they're designed to work this way, but they're stackable. And so I got three. These two cleaned up very, very nicely. And I don't know where that truck worked, but it must have been in a fire or something, because that one's ugly. And it doesn't flow nearly as much air even after I cleaned it. However, these two flow pretty good. E that one will hang around if as a spare or for testing purposes. And I'm thinking what I'm going to do is cut these membranes out of the middle of the lower one, stack two on top of each other. They're larger around, but shorter than the Peterbilt filter I was looking at. And combined, they are larger than the filter on uh, like a, a Clearview. Those things were 120 bucks a piece. These things were me asking some nice ladies at the parts desk if I could have some trash filters. So I've got exactly nothing invested in these, and that makes it, in my mind, certainly worth a try. Like I, said, I don't know precisely how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Then that filter will stick down here. It'll drop inside and seal. This second filter here will stack on top of the first one. I'll take, this is all rubber, so I'll just take and cut that out straight. Then that this filter will stack on top of the other one. So what I did is I cut it out with... Uh, just a simple jigsaw and a, a combo blade and on low speed. So it's not a perfect hole, but it works. And then this is just uh, like a viewport so I can tell when my tub is, is getting full of funk. So there's the inlet port on the side of what will be my dust cabinet. And that will drop in there like that and connect up over there. So. so I just have that spool on top weighting it down. It's not enough. I'll have to either come up with some big metal plate or an anchoring system. But it's good enough to test it. Originally I was worried about how am I going to seal the door on the spiral cabinet. Then it dawned on me, I don't have to. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be in there every single day, so I taped it up. Basically, I should be able to peek down inside, and who knows how long it'll go before it needs to be emptied. So, we'll give her a shot. I'm a little worried that the, that port there will swirl all the dust, so even the dust that falls out of the machine will get blown back up into the filters. We'll have to see. Here it is. First run. pouring out of them, so it's working. Well, this line is the second farthest away. Those two filters scounged from the dumpsters at Watkins Shepherd. Again, thank you very much, Watkins Shepherd, for letting me dig those two out. Those two filters are replacing the $120 small cartridge filter. So combined, they are quite a bit larger as far as the pleats and the height is concerned. So I think that's a winner. Time will tell, but I think that's a winner. So that is the air cleaner all completed. 
getting close. All right, here's the real test. That is a bucket of scrunge out of the shop vac. We're gonna see if I can fill this room full of fine powder dust, which would mean it's a big waste. from underneath the table saw. Look at that. The fines leaking around that joint, around that joint. Well, that's not good. I'm going to go find out what's going wrong outside. Well, I found out what went wrong. It was, you know, I don't have the barrel in place on the other side yet, so I just have a temporary catch basin. Well, it had gotten bumped. It was leaking. And when I went to investigate it, I managed to open it entirely and sucked up two or three gallons of all the uh, shavings from underneath the table saw and that crappy dust or whatnot. So it looks like until that point where I knocked it loose, it was operating normally, but right now I just filled all these filters with junk. Oops. So I gotta take care of that. Well, let's look inside, see what it looks like. They're working. It's too bad I, I did that to them. You can see everything down inside here. It just it just snorked the entire temporary dust collection barrel in one shot snorted it up through the equipment through the fan blade sounded like hail and then blew it into the filters so I will say that it it does appear to swirl this crap around in here a lot so I'm probably gonna have to come up with a, a different solution for this this far as the outlet port, maybe maybe come in and tip it up. We'll see. What we need to do is just run it under shop conditions for a while and see what happens. But first, I need to seal some things and get that drum in place. <laughs> 